What up my poker peeps and welcome back to vlog 14 part 3. I apologize I have been so behind and I need to get caught up. As you can see we're going to jump right into the first hand of the note and I got the Octo Crab. For y'all that like Ben Deach, yes the Octo Crab. So I have 8-3. I was in the button so I go ahead and call. Now Yucko is the big blind that's important to keep in mind. So right here I turn to pair. He goes ahead and is going to take a stab here. He bets out. Now, with him being in the big blind, that's something I want to talk about because some people ask me why I did what I did on the river. So with him being in the big blind, he could very easily have a four. He would check a four on the flop. So when he goes ahead, now I could raise here. I decide to go ahead and keep all of his bluffs in and call. And when the three comes, now it looks like my hand is amazing. It looks, Of course, it is an amazing hand. I got a full house. But when he leads out here, for 25 i think about raising but honestly the only thing that's going to call i mean he could have a weaker three so i could go for thin value with it but i'm really worried about him having a four and i don't want to say i raised like 50 or 75 somewhere in between them two numbers and he shoves it puts me in a bad situation so i go ahead and call thinking that only better will uh call or shove over top of me that's a it's an interesting spot so what do y'all think about that as you can see Suited, he's doing that right there because he knows about the Octo Crab. He knows about Ben Deach. He's a vlog watcher of many of the people. So there you see, he went a little overboard with it there. I think there might have been a little sarcasm, but it's all in good fun. We all friends and family at this table. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next hand of note. So we skip ahead a little bit here, and here we go. We're going into the deal. And like I said, there's going to be a final part to this vlog, and I will have it out later this week. I've been dragging, I do apologize y'all. So in this hand, I'm actually gonna have eight four offsuit. And this is a pretty interesting hand. Now, to give you an idea as we go through this, as y'all have seen, if you watch the first two parts, I'm definitely playing a super high V-pip. I'm pretty much almost playing every single hand. I finished the night at a 75 V-pip to give y'all an idea of how many hands I was playing. So in this hand, I do something different because I'm trying to mix it up because I'm playing so many hands. I don't want no one to get a read on my sizes or anything. So I make a weird raise size to six here. And everybody's kind of laughing about it. When it gets over to Swaggy Mac, he's like, what? He raised to four. He raised four. And he's like, no, he raised to six. He goes, no, do I mean he raised four? He even knows like this is super strange. And this is sort of what I want them to think. I don't want them to have any idea what I'm doing. So when we're making this weird raise size, they're probably wondering if I have an absolute monster. Like I said, when you're playing this many hands, you got to do stuff to be kind of all over the place and be almost create a weird balance with your hands and ranges. So the flop comes ace, nine, five. And as you can see, the only person that called was suited pairs and he has flopped a flush draw. So when I make this bet, I'm still kind of like goofing around and I bet six. That's right. The same raise size preflop, I go ahead and bet six. And of course, he has got a call. Now, what I would like him to do here, he should go ahead and raise. I think this is a great spot for him to raise. Um, he could find out real quick if I have an ace, and he could represent an ace. But he goes ahead and calls. When the nine comes, I'm a little worried about it, but now I decide to size up and almost bet pot. I bet 20 into 26. And now I'm really trying to see how strong he is and what he's got. Now, if he has an ace, and if he definitely has a nine, more of what I'm worried about is I'm having some type of nine. He could have like nine, eight, nine, seven, ten, nine, maybe even jack nine. He could have anything in a big blind. So now I'm trying to figure out, does he have a nine? If he has a nine, I think he's going to raise. So now when he just calls, I'm really starting to think that he has a flush draw or a big trap. So when the flush draw misses on the river and it's the king of spades, this is also, I mean, me being a pre-flop raiser, even though it was a weird raise, I should have, you know, aces and kings in range. So when he checks, I got to make a decision. And I can't go to showdown with eight high, so I go ahead and continue. And I go a little value looking here, and I go ahead and bet out 45. And he snap folds with a busted flush draw. So as you can see, I kind of like show him the cards. And now I'm trying to, all I'm trying to do is try to get them to not see where I'm at. I'm trying to be all over the map. That way, if I do get a big hand, they won't believe me. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the next hand. And like I said, a lot of these hands I'm showing you is really just showing how much splashing around I was doing and some of the thoughts of what I was thinking because I was playing such a high V-pip. You can't just play straight GTO if you're going to play 75% of your hands. So Swaggy Mac, he's going to go ahead and open up here with King Jack suited. Such a pretty, 
hand and he raises to 15. I'm on the button, so I got position. I'm gonna go ahead and call with the queen four suited and we're gonna go and take it to the streets. All right, so the flop goes ahead and comes six of spades, nine of hearts, 10 of diamonds. So this really is better for my range than his pre-flop raising range. And when he checks, I pretty much take him off of all the high pocket pairs like aces, kings, queens, jacks, etc. And when the four comes, now I have a pair. He's going to go ahead and make just a funny bet. Like I said, we're all friends. So he bets five. This is actually, I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to see if I actually had anything. So I go ahead and call the five. And now the 10 of clubs comes. At this point, I'm pretty much putting him on two overs, exactly what he has. And I'm going to go for value. And I say 10 on 10. And he knows when I say that. There's no way I have a 10 because that just ain't what I would do. So he's on a call and try to see what I got going on. And the four is good. So this is kind of one of them things where on the flop, I kind of felt like he didn't have it. And you can see I'm putting him with the, uh, uh, uh. Yep, that's right. The old finger roll. Y'all know what it is. I used to play a little b-ball back in the day. Yeah, I know. I don't look like I played any b-ball back in the day. But I used to love basketball when I was a kid. So now we're going to move on to this next hand. And on this hand, I actually have a premium. So the dealer's going to go ahead and throw the cards out here. And in just a minute, I'm going to look down at pocket kings. Now, you've seen the hands I've been playing. So this is a perfect scenario here for me. Now, like I said with the, the funny raise I did a minute ago, I've been all over the map with my raises. Sometimes I raise big, sometimes I raise small. And the reason I'm doing that is so they have no clue of what I'm really doing. Because I know, now, my strategy is when I have, because I know that people are going to call me more. They're trying to bluff me. They're trying to get me. I am the, the big target at the table. So we get, when it comes to me, after a couple of limps, I go ahead and bump it up to 18. And it goes over to Froggy. Froggy's got ace-queen offsuit. This could be a call. She's on a call in position, which, what, which I'm fine with. But she could be three-betting here. It's probably best she didn't three-bet because she... Uh, I would have definitely four bet right here. But she goes ahead and calls in position. Like I said, she's in position. I have no problem with her calling with the ace-queen offsuit. And we're going to go heads up to a flop. And a flop comes pretty amazing for me with the pocket kings. This is actually one of the better flops you want to see because usually the ace comes. We all know when we have pocket kings, the ace comes. Luckily, I avoid the ace. It comes 10-3-3. Three, three. She shouldn't have many threes in her range, so I down bet to 15 the graphics kind of get caught up here and it takes a minute for him to catch up, but she calls the 15 and the turn is the two of hearts. Now here, I think I should be sizing up because a lot of times she's going to have some type of flush draw, but I end up betting 25 and she calls pretty quick. Now the river comes probably the best card for me. It's just how I was running on the night. The river comes the queen. So now she has top, top. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and go for value. I bet 50, which is a little bit less than half. I could be going up here a little more, but I'm just trying to target a 10 at this point. I thought maybe like Jack 10 might get a crying call. I didn't know she ran into the queen. She calls for 50, which is fine. She should definitely be calling there 100% of the time. But unfortunately, I got the Cowboys and I scoop a nice pot there. And I'm pretty sure everybody at the table is shocked that I actually showed up with a decent hand after all the BS I've been playing. So. Even I get premiums, apparently. So it'll work out, and we're going to go ahead and go into the next hand. I'm not actually involved in, but I do want to talk about it because, as y'all know, if you've seen the first two parts and if you see the final part, Suited Pairs had a rough one. And I'd actually forgot about this hand until I went back and started doing all the editing. As you can see, he's kind of like hiding his face. He's having a rough night. He's trying to compose himself, and he's in rebound mode. So as it goes around to him, it's going to fold to him and he is in position. He's going to go ahead and limp in the cutoff with Jack-9 offsuit. He could be opening up here. Like you said, I mean, it's tough in a game like this because there's so much limping going on, but he could open. And of course, I have the ace-5 and Tyler Ty has queen-9 and he flops middle pair. Now, Ty leads out, I call, and this is where Suited made a mistake. I think he needs to be raising there 100% of the time because there's so many draws out there. And now the worst card comes off for him in reality and in every bit of the way. It's one of the worst cards he could see because it brings in so many straight draws that were on the flop, meaning 10-8, king-10, even queen-10 gets improves. So 
Ty leads out again. He goes for 11. I'm calling. I don't know why my clown behind's in there calling. But now the jig is up. Suit it says. Now he knows he needs a raise. He goes ahead and makes it 50. Now this kind of is a weird spot because he could definitely, the way it has worked, he is def he could definitely, because he limped, he could have all the straights in his range also. Now my clown behind needs to go ahead and say get out of there and leave it to the two guys that actually have good hands. And as you can see, it's two pair versus two pair. The river is the seven of diamonds. It does connect the board a lot, but really it shouldn't change anything. Most of the straights would have already been hit. And Ty goes ahead and gets a little tricky here and checks. Now, in the moment, I see why he's going for value here. I'm not hating what he's doing here because it's, it's, it's too nitty to check back. So he goes ahead and he's on bet 75. And now it goes back to Ty. And this is an interesting situation. On a board like this that is so connected with straights, and I mean, either one of them could easily have somehow hit a set. I mean, it's kind of unlikely. No one should have a set of queens. No one should have a set of nines. And honestly, no one should have a set of jacks. None of them should be there. Set of fives is really the only set that should be there because nines, jacks, and queens, and even queen jacks should be raising. So this is kind of a tough spot. Ty thinks about it for a while, and eventually he, you can see that he's thinking about, should I raise? I mean, suit it when he bets 75 with 137 behind. You have to feel like from Ty's point of view that he is committed. So he goes ahead and just makes the call. And yes, suit it gets coolered again. The story of this stream should have been suit it gets coolered because he got coolered a bunch. But I think if he raises on the flop, Ty and myself get out of there and he takes down a pot. I understand why he might have been trapping. He's looking to get a double. But man, that turn card was just... It's just the worst card in every which way. I wonder what would have happened if he would have shoved there. I wonder if Ty would have found a call. But it's really hard for him to shove there. So, we're going to go on to the next hand. And it's back with me playing my shenanigans. Alright, so Yucko. Now, to give you a little backstory, Yucko is a thinking player. And he understands a lot. Me and him talk poker a lot. And I got a ton of respect for him and his poker mind. As I do for a lot of people at this table. He goes ahead and opens up the queen jack offsuit. As you can see, if you go back and watch, Yucko was probably the most aggressive when it comes to opening and three betting, and that should tell you a lot. Um, so he goes ahead and opens up. I'm going to go ahead and jump in there with the 7-5 offsuit because I'm not seeing any two cards tonight that I don't like, apparently. So if they give me two cards, I'm pretty much playing them. So the flop comes jack, 10, deuce, two clubs. Going to check it over to the pre-flop aggressor and he's going to go ahead and yucko is going to continue for 15 and it's going to fold around to the hero yeah that's right i'm the hero of this story and i'm going to make i'm going to float with seven five offsuit and you know what when i make this call on the flop you know i got bad intentions three of clubs comes it goes check check now the river comes a brick well not really a brick it's the four of diamonds i believe Yes, no, four hearts. Excuse me, four hearts. And now I got to go ahead and I can't just be there with five high. So I go ahead and I bet 40. Now, 40 don't seem like a lot into a pot of 72. But as Yucko is explaining right here, he's like, man, that is such a value bet. So he goes ahead and thinks about it, thinks about it. And if you go back and look and rewind it, I make a little facial expression like I look disgusted when the three of clubs happens. I think he's smart enough to catch that and he knew that I... He felt like I had a flush. He ends up saying it like you, you'd you bet bigger if you had a bluff, which against most opponents, yes, I would go bigger. But against Yucko, I know that he's going to understand that this looks val very value heavy and is giving him such a good price. He's like, well, you would never bluff would give me this price. He ends up cutting out the chips, but finds the fold. And I uh, look, look, I got, yeah, I got to show it to him. And this right here was probably one of the better bluffs because I know that I used the right way against a very thinking opponent. If I go big there, he's probably going to snap and say I'd never do it with the flush. So I think I did real good with my sizing there against a specific player type. Shout out to Yucko. Mad respect for you, my little bro. So that's going to sum this one up. As you can see, I'm at 73 VPIP. This is the end of hour three. The next two hours... You'll see in the very last video, I'm going to put it in the last video. As you can see at this moment, I'm up 584 and I am sun running. So I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you in the next one.